You're listening to Secrets of a Bridal Seamstress podcast. I'm your host, Nadine Bozeman. In this podcast, I'm sharing business systems and strategies specifically tailored to the bridal sewing industry so you can build your own modern and profitable bridal alterations business. Join me as I also get to chat with fellow seamstresses and share their personal success stories. I'm so glad you're here and that we can grow together in this unique trade. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Secrets of Bridal Seamstress. I'm here with Kirsten Gillies, and we're doing a part two of an episode that we did, was it like two years ago? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I think it Which was two years ago. Weird to think about, but her episode was called, I think it was called Taking the First Step. It was basically mm-hmm. Kirsten just starting her business. And so before we hit record, we were like, last time she was in the basement of her house in the kids' playroom. And now yes. she's like upgrade and also Major so, upgrade. <laughs> so Deron and I both are doing some homework for this interview. And I, I will say that I have also grown because I kept interrupting. Like, I think like during interviews, I would like go like, mm-hmm, oh, ah, like I kept like saying things like, <laughs> as people were talking, Zoom would like cut to me. So then my face would be like, it was like, just like, oh. <laughs> it's it was like really cringy actually so I'm really <laughs> glad that I learned not to do that so I've, I've learned like non-verbal affirmations so that I'm not interrupting yeah. people so that's how I have grown but you have so much to catch us up on and I'm really excited yeah. because I feel like I remember Marianne Marianne if you're listening hello we love you hey girl Marianne had <laughs> mentioned that your episode really encouraged her to just do the thing because I think you said that like just yeah I was like just do it Mm -hmm. just do it yeah so how about you take us back to I love those pillows by the way little valentines Mm -hmm. yeah I think I actually might keep them out all year because they match my decor and it's all about love here so yeah exactly but you still have the tags on them no they're this that's the pull for the zipper it's a oh, heart. Oh, it's a heart. It's a okay, heart. I thought you were still deciding whether or not you wanted to keep them, but okay, they're heart pulls. Got it. Okay, well, I'll just tuck <laughs> that away then. So we don't think that. <laughs> Distracted. Okay, so if you haven't listened to Kirsten's first episode, you should go back and then just ignore all of my awkward interruptions. <laughs> but also go back and listen to the story. But how about you give us like an abridged version of like what led you, I mean- how, however abridged you want to get there, because we really want to talk about what's happened since you started it and like what's happened the past mm-hmm. year. We want the background, you know, to know how you did the yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, I, I had a goal in mind when I first started and I knew that I wanted to get out of my house and I knew that I wanted a storefront. I wanted to get out and just have this boutique sort of feeling with my experience for my clients. And with that in the back of my mind, I kind of like pushed myself in a way to grow enough in order to make it there. Mm -hmm. And I think like through the last two years, just being able to, you know, figure out my limits, figure out where to go, what I want to do. And to get to that point was like, it was, it was, it was a journey. (laughs) It it was a journey to get there. (laughs) So how about you take us back to like when you were at David's. So that's maybe the abridged version of how you got into this, of how you went from David's. Yeah. Into- so when I was at David's, I had my second child and I had some PTO left over at the, you know, after I had gone back and my kids were in daycare, of course, and the daycare unexpectedly, unexpectedly shut down. So I had to take the time. I had to take the time to take care of my kids because I had nowhere else to put them, you yeah. know, and I, and daycare is so expensive. And I just knew in my heart that something else was like, something was going on. Like I didn't want to really be there. I wasn't happy and I just had no time to be with my family. So during that time when I was home, I started dreaming of like, Oh, what if I can actually do this? And my husband has told me for years before, like I even went to David's, just do this on your own. Just do this on your own. You can do it. I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to be successful. I'm not going to be able to do it. Where are these people going to find me? How are they going <laughs> to find me? You know, like that's always a scary 
yeah like thought you know like okay if I actually take the huge leap are these people going to find me are they going to trust me are they going to you know mm -hmm. and you know I should have listened to him <laughs> Ryan, I should have listened to him he knew. like Ryan yeah he knew <laughs> so like he knew my future before I did um <laughs> But taking that time off, being with my kids and really trying to figure out like, okay, okay, I can, I can actually get this done. I can actually do it. And having the support of my husband, Ryan, to be like, okay, let's, let's figure this out. We, it's going to, it's going to take some time to build it up, but you know, we'll get there. And mm -hmm. three years later, and I'm in a beautiful storefront. Yeah. It and did not take long. I didn't That's have, the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so your first episode, you talked about how, you know, your first client, I think found you on Instagram. Yeah. It was, was it on Instagram. Yeah. It was well, a lot of people find me on Instagram because yeah. that's where I'm like mostly where I, I planted myself, you know, yeah. I, tr I tried to dabble in the TikToks, but I can't, I can't get it. <laughs> right. You know, right. I right. I know it. it's like a whole so new world. I, I just, I'm just like a, I'm just a scroller on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So Instagram I'm more familiar with and my millennial butt will stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've also developed a super beautiful website. And I know that a lot of seamstresses yeah. around the country have been inspired to use your website. Yeah. <laughs> essentially. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, yeah. your clients are attracted to you by your like Instagram, probably like your relativity on Instagram. Cause you're like very, yeah. Talented, and you're the real queen as we, as we've already established, but then there's like this beautiful, legit website to come to. I know you've established Upsado, but I think, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. So let's talk about yeah. when you were home and you're like, Oh my goodness, it's working. And I'm paying the bills. And when did you get to a point where you're like, okay, this is when it's time to move out. And we already had an episode all about like the move out process with Madison Lee of Madison Connor Designs. And so she really delves mm -hmm. into like, how do you know if this is your decision or not? Great episode. But for you, when were you like, okay, it's time knowing that like the, the storefront was the dream. So how did you know you were ready to take that leap and you could still pay the bills and like, you'd be still making money after paying rent, you know? I think after my first full year at home, because I started half in the half of the year. So I started in like July, mm -hmm. right? And then starting 2022 was my first full year in business. So I think after that first full, full year, seeing what I could accomplish at home and the revenue that I brought in at home, when I went to go speak to my accountant, he was like, well, if you make $30,000 more a year, you could probably have a storefront. I'm like, I can do that. And so <laughs> I'm like, so if I can, if I can, you know, project making $30,000 more a year from now, that storefront, it's, it, it's there, you know? Mm -hmm. And at that time I was looking at the space and I was like, I love this space. I yeah. need to have it. I want it. And yes, I'm like, yeah. Every time I drove past it, I'm like, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. You're mine. Like <laughs> manifesting, you know? So I swear. And I, I can see, I, I have it, been like, there. I have walked into KG Alts on Main Street and it is adorable. It's just as adorable as the photos look and it's perfect. It's huge. I'm a little jealous because you have like so much space. But okay, so people who are listening, they're like, okay, she makes it sound so easy. Like, oh yeah, I can make 30,000 more. So we'll break that down. When you say like, oh yeah, I can bring in 30,000 more. What are the steps? What does that mean? I added packages. I added packages to my services and that really helped boost my revenue uh, because it was like, it was close to maybe like 17, I would say like 17,000 extra, yeah, uh, you awesome. know, I already had, yeah, I already had people booked out for 2023. And so like half of those clients did not get those packages. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just thinking like, oh, okay. And I also added on gown preservation, which really helps bring in a little extra revenue. Mm -hmm. And I upped my ticket price. Mm -hmm. I upped my ticket price because I felt like I wasn't, now that I was moving into a space, I needed to be charging a higher ticket because they're getting right. more of a boutique experience. They're not coming to my home. They're coming 
to a storefront and like it's beautifully curated in here and decorated and like they're having that Mm one-on-one and not at a salon or in my basement anymore so yeah I felt like I needed to so when you're thinking about you want to move out of the house you have this goal in mind that you want to have this like storefront would you say like would you recommend to somebody to start raising their prices at home in order to like prepare to move out? Or would you say like, keep it steady Eddie with your current prices and then give yourself room to raise prices once you move out? Cause I know how I did it, but I don't know if that's how everybody else does it. So. Yeah, I would definitely stay steady with where you're at right now and then gradually grow from there. I didn't go boom, you're going to have this huge ticket because Mm -hmm. I didn't feel uh, for me, I didn't feel comfortable charging that price, you know, until I came into this space and was like, oh, they're getting a a luxury experience. I need to be charging what luxury price, like Mm -hmm. pricing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like at home, you can have a bigger ticket, which is fine, but give yourself a little room to, to grow a little bit further as you get into the the space, if you want to get into the space. I, I love you know. that answer because that, I think that really clarifies a lot because yes, you want to be charging equitably for, you don't want to say like, oh, I'm just working at home. So I'm not worth the, this, you know, right. hourly rate or whatever, like that's not it at all. But I like how you said, give yourself room because you move into a space, you're going to have more overhead. And I think to your clients, like we said before, like your clients understand that. I think there's yeah. almost like that expectation that there it, things would be a little bit higher in a professional space. I don't know. And I know this is like a hot topic, so I kind of want to be sensitive of how we talk about it because I know there's a lot of opinions. And so, and I know when I was working from home, that's when I first started using packages. Like this was what, like seven years ago. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, well, who's going to really want to pay this premium like at my house? But they did. And it also just from then, like it helped me pick who I wanted to work with and help kind of like weed out the clients even back then when I had definitely like a less than ideal situation like in my home where I was working but it's like that right. didn't affect what I was charging and then when I moved out I was able to raise prices a little more and each year I've just raised them to kind of match our you know cost of living that's being raised all the time but yes <laughs> on the topic of charging your worth I just posted on circle today that I went to the mechanics to drop my car for an inspection and behind the desk is this big sign saying our hourly rate, which is $129 an hour, you know, plus the cost of materials, yeah. right? So they're a specialty type service. So, and we are too. Not mm-hmm. everyone knows how to sew a wedding gown. Right. So just like also my crazy? circle post from yesterday, like I shared, yes, there's all these that are coming together. Yeah. Same yes. thing. Yeah. Yes. The understanding. But, and I love that. Cause I, I remember seeing that and I was like, wow, that's like super bold to be like, this is our hourly rate. And I feel like for us, it's like, eh, there would almost be like anxiety of having it on display, but I kind of like that. Like, okay, this is what it is, you know? And it's because right. of the experience or this knowledge or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Right. So have oh, your hourly really. rate, whether you're at home or in a professional space and stick to your guns with that. So as you're building your clientele, how did you get a little bit wiser at choosing who you worked with? Like, did you like, you know, pick up these like spidey senses of the red flags or how did you start like really finding the clients who were like re- excited to work with you, excited to pay what you were charging? And then like, how did you gracefully weed out the others? So I would say my intake form, I can tell a lot by what they write and what they tell me they need and the pictures that they send. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) because now that I'm working with Dubsado, I get all of the, they send me pictures so I can see, I can even like see what they look like. So, (laughs) and I'm like, "Hmm, that girl doesn't seem like my kind of girl. I don't, I don't think like, I just, her aura doesn't seem right to me. You know, like I can just see that. (laughs) You're like, now that I can but see the picture, I, I can judge them and say, I don't want to work with you. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Because no, but I know what you're I saying. And sometimes I do stalk them on Facebook. Sometimes if I have like, I will like look them up on Facebook too. And you just 
sometimes you can't help what you pick up and you know, yeah. like, you, really you know, you know, yeah. Yeah. The people that reach out to me already feel connected to me, you know, like they, they go on my Instagram, they see what I do. They see my personality on there. They go to my website, they see what's on there and they can, they can connect to me that way. I feel like I don't necessarily get a lot of people that I wouldn't well, like drive with. Mm-hmm. So I would say it's just, it's just important to like, put yourself out there, show your personality, let them see who you are. And in return, they'll do the same, mm-hmm. you know, like if you're as transparent as possible, just like, just putting yourself out there, just put yourself out there. I know it's, it's like kind of like dating, right? You're trying to get these people to come in and, and like you. So it's just so important to just put yourself out there and them see who you truly are and yeah. your skills will talk for themselves. You know, like yeah. you are very talented. People are going to you because you are talented, but they want to see you. Right. That's really yeah. good. And I, oh, as you're speaking, I'm like my personal alterations Instagram, like, is just kind of like this for the stepdaughter, (laughs) like (laughs) stepdaughter of like my social media, because like, I rarely post on that. I mean, it's not rare. I keep it up. Right. Like, and I, I do the, the bare minimum, but like, whenever I'm going to be like going on stories, I I'm doing it to talk with my seamstress community. And then like my poor sweet Francis account, like, like there's nothing up there. And as you're talking, I'm like, oh man, there was a time when it's like, that's all I did. Or I'd be like, I'm working on this dress. Let me show you. Or like always in my stories, I had somebody's dress or somebody's veil or whatever. And like, that's, there was so much growth with that. And I almost don't want to admit that because I'm like, ugh. Yeah. And, and I feel like too, I'm like, well, I'm already booked. So I don't need to be doing that. But staying active within that local community is so important. So thanks for that reminder. And it was yeah. a little because yeah. I'm like, ugh. But it's true. And, and it, it's like the connecting of the personality. They get to know who you are. I love how you said that. And then yeah, they're going to be honest too once they kind of see you showing up. So I'm like, okay, got to put a little more time into that baby because. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but you're also growing your secrets of a bridal seamstress business too. Like you right. are also growing that. So like the seamstresses that are going to find you to want to work with you there in that, like be a pro- part of this community. Yeah. You're doing that on that side of business right. just because right. you're not doing it. You're still doing it. You're just doing it for a different audience. You, you know, know like all oh, the brides. Yeah. <laughs> oh, them. Oh. I know. That's and it's, I think about, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I think that's the hard part is being comfortable. Like I'm just really comfortable with the clients that I got with the, my books are done you know what I'm saying it's like okay I'm just maintaining back to that word but I I also want to be intentional of like what I'm posting how I'm posting on that so anyways thanks for that little encouragement because I think we could all hear that and I think that's what people don't want to do right it's so much easier to post like this really cute picture and I'm speaking for myself and it's like Mm -hmm. hey I have so many professional photos from brides that are like here are my photos you know and I'm I love sharing them but it takes a little bit more to be like okay, I'm showing up in my stories or I'm showing my face or I'm talking about how I'm doing this work or mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah. but that's the stuff I think that like brides love. It's like, oh, she's doing that with a dress. She could do this with my dress, you know, even if it's like, yeah. A so yeah, that's a nice little reminder. And I think mm-hmm. once you get in the habit, it's a habit. Oh, I get I my creative that. juices out through Instagram. That's what I always say. <laughs> that's what I want to talk about next. So I don't know if you can give us any of your secrets to how do you find all the funny reels? I just scroll. You know, like when, when I'm, when I'm working, I just, you know, pop over to the real section and I find like, oh, I like that. Let me save that for later. Mm-hmm. You know, let me put that in my saved folder or and like, just a- great. I definitely go, I have moods. I know that I have moods like certain times of the month that I want to record reels. <laughs> and then there's like certain like literal seasons where I'm like, Ooh, I have like a month of like reels. And then it's like, hmm, I don't want to yeah. do this anymore. You know, so your yeah. consistency is very commendable. Thanks. I mean, I, I feel like the last couple of weeks, I really wasn't consistent. I was posting like once a week or like once every two weeks. And I'm like, I'm busy, you know, people, Mm -hmm. if I'm not, if I'm not posting, like I'll put, I'll put something on my stories. Right. So people see that, like, I'm still active on there, right? um, but actually bringing up, like building the content takes Mm -hmm. time. And it's like a whole other job 
in itself. Like Amanda and I made that reel the other day and it took us an hour. Like that's a, an hour that, you know, yeah. we don't have don't sewing. <laughs> so yeah, that I don't get back, you know? And yeah, content creation is no joke. Yeah, it's for no real. Joke. Yeah. yeah. So I just do it when, when it strikes, you know, I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh, let me, I'm, I'm building this sleeve. I'm building a custom sleeve for a bride. Let me just take videos of myself you know yeah. and mm-hmm. and then I have it for later and I'll find a video or like I'll go to cap cut or whatever and I'll just yeah. put in my video like my my little clips that I took and it'll blend in and make it look nice and then that's it perfect perfect yeah so I'm, I'm feeling so inspired so I'm gonna have like all these reels and then by the time this episode airs people are gonna be like oh that's why <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> They were talking about it and then she felt like she had to step it up. Okay. So you, I want to, I want to make sure we get all the goodies in here. So you found, you found the space first or you outgrew your house first, or you just met with your bookkeeper and he was like, oh yeah, you can do this. So I, since starting working at my house, I was always working, looking for spaces. Mm. Always. I am like a house hunter. I, I don't care if I have a house, I'm still looking at houses. Like that's just how I am. So I, I'm just, I was just constantly looking online and then driving past things on main street or in different towns and just getting out of my car and peeking through the window, like Mm -hmm. through the window to see what it looks like. And I saw this space online and it's literally right around the corner from my house. So we're not too far, like five minute drive. So as we were, we were all together as a family in the car. And I told, we were driving past. I was like, Ryan, pull over. I need to go look at the space. And when I, when he pulled in, I looked through the window and I'm like, all right, I, I need to see this. Like I need to go inside. I need to see it. So I called the realtor and we met and I looked around. I'm like, all right, let's see, let's see what my accountant says. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met with him because I knew the cost of um, what would be to, you know, be here. So then Mm -hmm. I did my calculations, how many brides I would need to take per month in order to cover, cover my expenses and also to, you know, take some money home as well. And I made it work. I made it work. Yeah. And I love how you said you just were always looking. Like, I think sometimes when I'm working like with one-on-one clients and they're like, I want to find a space Mm-hmm. But it's like almost this expectation of you look at one and that's the one. And really it's like the more that you are just like opening up to possibilities. And also like, you kind of don't know what's out there, what the prices are, what you can even work with. Like sometimes you have in your mind, this vision of like this pristine, perfect, you know, open space and a huge back room and da, da, da. But then once you get yeah. into spaces, you understand the prices and you know what you can actually afford and then how you can be flexible. You can start envisioning your business in these like, like real live spaces instead of just stuff in your head. And that's what opens the door for things to actually happen. So like, I always like encourage the one-on-one, my one-on-one clients, like look, book the appointments, like just meet with the realtor, like just go in, walk around because that's what gets the juices flowing. And then you're putting yourself physically in the space. You're looking at the numbers. It's becoming a real thing instead of just something that's kind of like in your head. You know what I mean? So I love that that was just like, okay, as soon as you had that idea, you just were looking. And you weren't like, okay, let's jump into the first place I look at, but just getting acquainted with how this works. And it's so outside, at least for me, like I didn't have any background in business. So like the thoughts of like signing a lease for a professional space, I was like, ooh, like I didn't know what the heck I was doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I had to tour. <laughs> me either. <laughs> like okay yeah this would work and then let's not forget Amanda because that's also a huge thing yes she's her own chapter in this so yes yeah hi Amanda if you're listening yeah so she came on last year she actually had reached out to me um because she took over my position at David's Bridal and okay I don't even think I knew that I didn't know she was your husband wow oh I kind of feel for David's I don't. <laughs> okay. I don't. So, so she had reached out to me because she wants to get out on her own. So, yeah. but she's still just starting out in like the bridal industry. Her background is in cosplay and she's been sewing cosplay for 
several years. So the last couple of years she's been in the bridal world and, you know, her, her vision is wanting to make these colorful wedding gowns. Like Mm -hmm. she is such like an ethereal type energy. She's like, I want to be in a forest sewing and I'm like, okay, that's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But really she wants to, she wants to like make gowns, colorful gowns and have like her own line. So what I said, I said to her, like, why don't you come and work with me and you can help me and I'll also help you. Like, I'll teach you Mm -hmm. and we can just kind of grow together and see where it takes us, you know? So she started out last year, one day a week. And then this past year, this like starting in, I guess, January, I was just like talking with her. I'm like, what if you come on a few other days? and take over the bridesmaids and moms business. You know, why don't you start doing the fittings? Because I, I trust her to do the fittings and she does all the sewing for them. But we also have a few other projects that we're working on together for like in-house stuff. So mm-hmm. it's going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge step. Cause I think for a lot of us who we work, cause I'm, I think I'm too much of a micromanager at the moment to consider hiring somebody else. And that is such a big step, not only for trusting people with your sewing, but like having somebody come in your space and be like in your work bubble, you know what I mean? So that says a lot about Amanda. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's worked and out. I can, I can see, I mean, yeah, it's worked out really well. We've, mm-hmm. we've started to get to know each other a lot more. We get along really well. You know, we're not exactly the same, but yeah. we have very similar, like we're very similar in the same, but uh, you know, opposites. Yeah, and to attract. So it's like, really well. yeah. yeah, we compliment. So I'm really excited for like where, where we go from here. Yeah. And I still cannot believe yeah. it's like just been two years. So three years since we started the business, two years since we talked last and like, it's like a totally different life over there. So, so what are yeah. your future plans? Like we could say, what, what would you like to have accomplished by December of this year? And then we're going to move out to five years. So don't give it all away for okay. December. Okay. I won't give it all away. I think I want to just maintain this year. I really want to focus on the balance of everything because last year I would say I was still in like the feast or famine mindset, Mm -hmm. worried like, oh, now that I have this huge expense, I need to take everything on. Yeah. So I kind of gave myself a limit to Mm -hmm. where, how many people I take per month, what I want to take on per month. And I'm really, really trying to stick to that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Really. I like, there's one month where I'm like at the tip of it and I'm like, okay, no more. Yeah. So far I've been able to say no to people. So Mm -hmm. knowing my limits. Right. Cause I think last year was huge. So we won't like give the specific number, but I think we all like almost fell over when we heard like (laughs) your revenue total. It was just astronomical. And I know that comes from like, yeah. okay, you just want to make sure everything was taken care of. Like it was your first full year. So it's like, you didn't want to mess up. Like now that you're in, you have more bills to pay. It's like, bleh, bleh, bleh. but then it's like, okay, yeah. wait, you don't need to be like that because things can still even out, even if I don't take every bride. And yeah. like, it's nice to know like, okay, if worse comes to worse, you could make that amount. Like, you know what to do if you got to get that done, but now you're in a place where you can just be a little picky choosy. And also because you're like booking up so quickly, you have that luxury of the exclusivity and you can, you know, add, Mm -hmm. like we talked about, like add a little more resistance to that ticket. So you're just getting the cream of the crop clients that who, you know, really want to pay the premium to work with you, which is awesome. And like, that did not take long to get there. No. And I feel like, I don't know why it didn't take that, like why it didn't take that long for me. Mm -hmm. I think because I, I'm really, I was really like gung ho about doing this and doing it like properly because it's my livelihood. You know, mm-hmm. I needed it to work. Yeah. I didn't want to fail at it. You know, I didn't want someone to be like, oh, well, you did that. So that didn't work out for you. Huh? You know, I didn't want that. <laughs> that someone I, is I like your to, weird inner yeah. voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, because I feel like sometimes with me, I start projects and I'm like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I get embarrassed or I get scared or I'm afraid of what people are going to think or say. And honestly, like, I don't know why I thought that. 
Hmm. Yeah. And I, and for me, like, I think because people think of seamstresses as like, oh, they think of us as old women in the basements of our house sewing. Like, no, we're actually a hot <laughs> commodity around here. Like, we're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I felt like I needed to kind of prove people wrong. So in order to get there, and I still get questions like, oh, how's your business going? Like, it's popping off. Like, it <laughs> is good, you know? <laughs> it is great. I'm telling people, no, I can't take them. <laughs> it's popping off. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And I'm sure that was kind of like a bit, I, I, you know, you think back of like what that kind of did for like yourself, seeing like, yeah. okay, I could do this. Like I did this for my boys. Like, okay, I got to figure it out so that they can still, and even now, like when I think about your routine, like you are either you or Ryan are picking up the kids, like you're, you know, then you're home, then you're making dinner for the boys. It's like, you're, you're still like prioritizing them. And that's a huge perk of working for ourselves, but sometimes we lose sight of that. And it just becomes like mm -hmm. a huge monster that takes over. And so like, I think that will be fun for you this year to like really refine, like, what do you want your routine to be? Like, what do you want to be available for? And having a little yeah. more room to do that. And then like next year is another year, you know what I mean? So like, one of my really good friends, she and her husband own a construction business and they're like, I think they're in their like early fifties. And so they have like a really successful construction design business. And she gave me such good advice. And she's like, every year will be different and that's okay. Like some years you have to focus on the money-making jobs and just, you need to like, you know, just get the work done and have the money come in. And then other years you have to focus on like creative projects that light you up and like, and then the next year you might have to rest a little bit. And she's like, it's constantly, you know, listening to like what your family needs, what you and your spouse need. And then you, your business ebbs and flows. And it's like, you don't really hear that. Usually it's like, okay, you just keep grinding until you die. And like, you just keep making more and more and more. <laughs> and like, I think it's like, for those of us yeah. are, like, very driven, it's so natural to be like, okay, the next step. Okay. Well, I did this, then I want more of this. I want more. And it's like, it just is never enough. And I don't know if it was this retreat or maybe it was like the last one. And our last, like the Austin retreat was just like less than a month away. So I shouldn't be forgetting this, but I forget when we had a conversation like this in person of having a set monthly income goal, like your quota that you just have in mind, yes. because you don't have like this preset number. It is never enough. And like, you never stop to think like, oh, cool. I've made this benchmark and that's, that can be enough. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And like, mm -hmm. especially if it's mm -hmm. just one or like a two person show, it's like, you can just like die pushing through. So I'm really excited for this year to be your like, okay, gonna you know, like, throttle back a little bit and then see what happens and what, what gives yourself like room to think what you want for next year, you know, after mm -hmm. last year being such this huge marathon year. So moving on to five yeah. years. I would love to share. So five year plan is to start offering a bridal boutique experience. I would love to host trunk shows for designers that really um, love their craft and are made in house, um, whether it be in their own atelier or, you know, I don't want, I don't want to work with designers that outsource overseas because I feel like it, like the, the love of the craft gets lost. And I just want to work with people that just love what they do and really want to make the bride feel their best on their day. And focus on like the actual fit of the garment mm -hmm. because I think that's what's really important is like the actual fit and the structure and the construction of it so you know making it a little bit more smaller scale in-house yeah is very important for me mm -hmm. yeah and for those of you listening and you're like oh my goodness I love that idea but how do you even like, how do you know? Kirsten went to New York Bridal Fashion Week in October. And I, I remember you just being like lit up after that because you were able mm -hmm. to see all these independent designers and just the way they create is different and who they're creating the gowns for is different. Like their average bride yeah. is different than, you know, XYZ, these big designers. Groups. Yeah. And yeah. so like, that that probably also opened your mind up to like, oh, I can actually email this person. Like I have a contact now. Like it's not just this yeah. like 
idea like yeah. where do you take this from like you can pick up the phone and call somebody so that's like super exciting I love yeah. that and your space would be perfect yeah. for that I know we already Amanda and I were already imagining it <laughs> we were already dreaming of like how we would organize a space where everything would be in like our sew room right now would if the the guy moved out behind us because there's an apartment behind us we would take over that studio apartment as like the alteration space and then in our sewing area now would be like the fitting room so we, yes. we, you know yeah we just yeah. gotta get what's his name to move out yeah the loud mouth yeah anyway <laughs> gotta go <laughs> that's um, a whole today. other podcast that we can <laughs> <laughs> I know that will be like the secrets the the secrets episodes that are coming out Ooh, yeah peak that's happening so when you think about what is your timeline for that like when could that feasibly happen your first trunk show I mean I would have loved it to happen this year but I already know that it's this year is over basically already <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. it's just don't you feel that way like yes. even though it's February I feel like the year is already over I'm already yeah. looking at like June July August like I'm already looking at that so everything's clean I would say yeah everything is done we're set so I think I want to start maybe reaching out to people this year to book for next year mm -hmm. because I want to start building up like the recognition letting people know that this is what I'm going to be offering so starting off slow building that reputation that business and then gradually building into actually housing all of like you know the designers buying the stock and all of that yeah yeah in here that's awesome I'm like so excited. Yeah. Like I want to go to it. I want to go to a trunk show. Like one of the ones that you have, or maybe the first <laughs> one. I can help pick up the cupcakes or whatever. So excited. Yeah. Um, okay. So fly out. Yeah. Let's see. What do you want to tell listeners? Like I, I mean, I know I've been asking you questions, but I kind of want to like give you the floor if you're talking to listeners who are like in like the first year and a half and they're like, where will this go? Like I just kind of want to give you mm -hmm. the reins to to speak your truth <laughs> <laughs> speak my truth okay <laughs> I I honestly would just say do what works best for you everyone's journey is going to be different I didn't expect everything to happen as quickly as it did mm -hmm. although I really pushed myself to get there everyone's journey is going to be different you're going to be at home for x amount of years you're going to want to stay home for, you know, you want to keep your business at home and that's great. But if you have like aspirations of moving out of the house and moving into a space, keep always keep that in the back of your mind and kind of push along. You will get there. If you are determined enough and you believe in yourself, you will get there. Mm -hmm. And I believe in you too. <laughs> <laughs> you have two cheerleaders ready to help. So moral of the story of this episode, because the, the first, the OG episode, you said, just do it. Like, just do the just thing. Do mm -hmm. And so this time you're like, do it your own way. Right? Was yeah. Fine? Okay. Yeah. I mean, do it, but go at your own pace and mm -hmm. find what works best for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What have there been things that like have helped you along the way? Like, oh, these were like this was like a great habit to get into to like, cause I feel like, you know, people listen and I, when I listen to podcast episodes, I take notes. I'm like, well, not physical notes, but I like, as Wendy would say, I click save. So it's like, or hit yeah. save. So it's like, I do want to leave people with like, these are things that can help you get to from A to B. So what were like habits or resources or things that just helped you get there? I, so I would say, having that initial connection with the bride you know mm -hmm. like the investment guide that kind of just I sent it out and they knew exactly what to expect mm -hmm. that way it, there's not so much back and forth it cuts back right. on time so I, like the automation really helped and yeah. even being in Lopsado now the the automation has been like amazing mm -hmm. and so for those of you listening so, and you're like what is this investment guide if you've taken a master class of mine about the fitting packages that is kind of like part two of the training is like explaining basically putting your offerings on a separate pdf or 
Yeah. In Dubsado, it's a workflow. So your bride kind of sees a condensed version of like what you offer and what they're choosing to do with you. And mm -hmm. there's also a podcast mini series coming out just about fitting packages and investment guides. So that, that sign up could be in the show notes as well for you. So, okay, continue. So your investment guide and then Dubsado. Yeah. Yes. And just really focusing on like the tasks and what I need to do. Okay. So that's what an investment guide is. Yeah. Like long story yeah, short. And I, yeah, long story short, the investment guide really helped me, but to get that part of your community really, you know, helped me do that. Where can people follow along if they're not already following you or yeah, your Instagrams, the TikTok, I, you do post TikToks every once in a while. It's yeah. A like once in a blue moon and I get like 10 likes on them and that's it. <laughs> It's very um, degrading, I feel like on the tic tac. Well, I know, I'm like tic tac. Like it, and then I scroll, I scroll, and I see like twenty five thousand likes, and I'm like, oh, it's not me. So I'm on Instagram. You can find me at kg underscore all, um, and that's where I usually am. Well, if you want to look at my website, it's bridal alterations by Kirsten .com. And it is beautiful. And you've started this trend of working with, who is your Dubsado gal? Dubsado gal. Kelly, my girl, Kelly. Okay. So Kelly started working with Kirsten and then she's done like, I think she's onto her fifth SBS member doing their Dubsado setup. So you yeah. started. I told her from the beginning, I was like, listen, I'm going to get you a lot of people. So she's like, all right, send them my way. I'm like, you got it. <laughs> she's like, wow, this is all ready. new world. going to be booked. You yeah, booked all year <laughs> for real. And what I just keep, I mean, my Dubsado is kind of sitting, not totally edited or worked through yet, but everybody that I've talked to in our membership, who's already applied it, they're like, oh my gosh, it's a game changer simplifying so much. Yeah. So that is the next step. That's a different episode, but yeah, that's the next step for me. I think we're getting, I think yeah. Kelly is going to be on the podcast within the next couple months. So that'll be a good. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's well, thank great. you, Kristen. And it's very exciting watching your journey and I'm pumped for mm -hmm. the next five years. I cannot wait for the first trunk show. Okay. Bye guys. See you okay. next week. Bye. Okay. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and share this podcast with a friend. And if you're feeling really generous, leave a review. Thanks everyone.